All right, so this is gonna be a little bit of a different video. I'm actually here at the AMA show. Unfortunately, it's actually the last AMA show they're gonna be having because it's um, it's not getting the attendance that it used to be getting because everything is moving to online. Anyways, I was um, flying this thing inside the AMA show at the very end. And please don't get upset at me. This is the AMA show and there were people flying full-blown fixed wings with propellers and engines inside and not a single person complained or flinched that I was flying this thing around and that is really what this thing is intended for it's intended to fly slowly around places and I went from absolutely hating this thing to really loving it in a matter of just two days so first of all let's back up and say or let me say that I'm impressed that such a product even exists. I don't know how adopted the DJI system has been because it's not a perfect product. It, it, it definitely has some flaws and the main issue that I see with it is that you're tying yourself to one company if you do go with the DJI product. However, the pricing is actually fine. Everything about it is fine. And there's a couple of very interesting things that I learned about it from uh, some of these companies that work here that do RF. So. A lot of people wonder how on earth, I'm gonna talk about the DJI stuff before I talk about the quad. So I'll talk about the quad some more in a couple minutes. A lot of guys wonder how on earth they're getting away with 700 milliwatt transmission out of these goggles. And the way they're doing it apparently is that, uh, so the transmission signal needs to be apparently under 500 milliwatt transmission, not the actual signal coming out off the board. So what they're doing is they're just using 50% uh, efficiency antennas to knock the signal down in power as it's coming off. So literally, if you just swap the antennas to better antennas on this thing, it will work out better. And the reason why the goggles are RP SMA, at least the reason before the updates to the FCC, recent updates to the FCC, was that in order to be allowed to have that transmission signal be higher if you're using better antennas, you have to have it be compatible with all the antennas on the market that are standardized. And SMA is the standardized connector, RP SMA is the non-standard version of the connector. So the reason they went with RP SMA is to make it non-standard and to step outside that requirement of the FCC. So some really interesting things that DJI is doing here to get around the FCC requirements. So it really shows that DJI is just another uh, hobby company <laughs> that's just trying to finagle its way around uh, regulations and government and whatnot. The other reasons why I, I mean, the main reason why I, the last time I really used the DJI thing was when I was making a review for it and I use it a lot for the first couple months that I have it. Then I made the review and I didn't, I, I didn't even touch it. Like I have three quads with it built into it, but I don't use any of them because the system is just not versatile enough for me to use. I fly a lot of different things and you can't use it with analog. You can't use it with, a, I don't know why they didn't allow for analog signal input. I do know that iFlight has a modification to the goggles to allow you to get analog into it, but the screen viewing experience is not very good for analog. And as far as I've heard, there's some latency or some issue. I don't know what it is, but it's just not versatile enough for me to use. And I don't really fly five inch that much anymore. And you really can't, you can, but it's really not as easy to f finesse the, the air unit into something that's under five inches. It's just not quite as nice to fly. I like things that have really great performance. And this is where we approach this thing. So this is a product that has the DJI air unit built into it. And what's really impressive is that it exists because I don't think people have adopted the air unit enough for comp to warrant companies to start making products with the air unit built into them. However, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't, I don't follow the... Um, the sales figures of of the DJI system but if history is to be looked at Connex ProSight was the only really other HD system that ever gained any market share and they're gone however Connex is not really good comparison because literally the only thing that the DJI system shares with the Connex system is that they both did low latency HD transmission everything else about the DJI, including that low latency transmission and the video quality is significantly improved over the Connex Pro site of many years past. All that being said, when I first got the system and I flew it, my eyes were watering at how gorgeous the view was when I was flying. 
but I don't really need HD to do all the FPV stuff that I do, and I still prefer analog because of how darn versatile it is. But the DJI system is so glorious to fly. And something that I do when I'm flying the DJI system is I usually just look around. I'm not flying for any kind of crazy acrobatic or whatever. I'm just flying for my own personal enjoyment because the video is not quite good enough for any kind of production. And I'm just flying to just scout and look around. And where this thing falls in is that it's it's like an off-road vehicle of the sky. You can just run into branches, run into trees, rummage through stuff, and you feel like a little animal. It's like you don't care. You just go, and it goes, and it does whatever you want it to do, which is great. The downsides of the flight performance is, is that any of these Cinewhoops fly like absolute crap because of these prop guards, the not guards, the duct. And there's all this duct science and whatnot. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really apply as much as people want it to apply in these things. You can argue that all you like, but it really doesn't apply as much as we want it to. And so the problem is that throttle control and altitude control in this is just really, really horrendously bad. And this is no different. All of the Cinewhoops that have these full ducts or full prop guards are exactly that. But what this duct does do, aside from protecting you from branches and whatnot, which you could just use prop guards, you don't need a duct, it makes it look safer than it actually is. It actually is a little bit safer as well. But if you really rammed into someone, or you, this, if this thing even fell two feet to the ground, you would break everything. Because the frame is a monobody frame, the ducts are super thin, they're five gram uh, ABS prints, so they're really, really skinny prints, and um, it's not going to hold up to damage. It's not going to hold up to any sort of punishment at all. Uh, I mean, you can like bump into stuff, but it's not going to hold up to any falling. But it's not really intended to fall. I mean, you're probably not going to drop this thing from a height. It would be pretty unusual for you to do that. And anybody that's going to be flying this thing or spending this kind of money on this thing is probably not somebody that's a new pilot that's going to be, you know, ramming it into stuff. Maybe you are, I don't know, but hey, look at these guys. They're all... <laughs> <laughs> Emacs crew is all leaving. Anyways, yeah. So, aside from that, let's talk about the quad. The quad has the iFlight 20 by 20 stack in there. The ESC in there is totally fine for this build out that they have. They have the uh, 1408 3600 kV motors. It's a 4S quad. The quad itself, without the battery or anything on board, is like 405 grams. With the battery, it's 600 and something grams. So, it's, it's a pretty hefty three inch quad. Uh, it, it does not perform well, as I said. The throttle control is awful. However, you can do a slow cruise and it performs fine. Um, the electronics are fine. Something really interesting about the electronics is that you see right there, that's the USB port for the for the flight controller. It's actually a USB Type-C port. And they did that to match the USB Type-C port on the air unit, which is really a nice touch for them to do because now you only need one wire to access both of them. Issues I have with the quad is that I don't, really like any monobody design or just unibody frame design I'm, I'm not a fan of that at all however in this case i guess they just don't know this is still early in my opinion in these cinewhoop things i think there's a lot of different designs on their way i have one as well uh but yeah the monobody is is going to break and uh it's going to be annoying but hey it's not intended for crashing um other thing that i'm not really a fan of are the the sing motors they're really powerful the 1408s are really powerful and they're really a good kv for the three inch prop and the 4s battery everything is really great about them aside from a couple things so the smaller size sing motors are a little bit heavier than you might expect them to be for the size of motor than they are. So their normal 2207s, 2306s are really fantastic motors, but when they get smaller into the 14 size or anything smaller, they weigh like half a gram to a gram more than they really should. So it's a little bit annoying, but it's not really a big deal. What is a bigger deal for me is that when they first started sending me the prototype motors, they had one millimeter internal shafts on a 14 size motor. And I was just really shocked that they had put such a tiny little shaft on a motor that can generate so much power. And so this motor has a 1.5 millimeter internal shaft. And you're really, again, not gonna be crashing and smashing this thing, but it really would have been nice if they had just used a two millimeter shaft in there. Um, otherwise, the quad is, is fine. The one the version I have has Crossfire on there, and I really prefer to use Crossfire with uh, the DJI system because you will not lose your control link and if you do happen to lose video link you'll use your control link also with the dji controller so the crossfire with the dji video is 
in my opinion, probably the best setup you can possibly have right now in existence. One other thing I would point out about the DJI system, well not point out, but something that we're guessing it does is that we think that the DJI controller actually links to the goggles and then the goggles transmit to the air unit. And that's interesting, just interesting. So what's most likely the case is that two of these antennas on the goggles are actually for transmission and two of them are for reception. We're not really sure of that. They're still kind of investigating it and researching it. But at the end of the day, this quad has a very small audience, I think. I don't think there are a lot of DJI users at this point, and I don't think there are a lot that are willing to spend the $400 on this item. But if you do, and there really aren't many other Cinewhoop alternatives, or I don't even know if there's many that'll fit the air unit, this is a really... It's a really fun quad to fly around, specifically because you're not going to be flying this thing fast and um, you have a really beautiful HD video on board that you're just going to be flying for yourself. So it's just a total blast to fly around, but I'm still not a huge fan of the DJI system. I do like having it. I just don't use it. I just don't use it. But having this quad now, I'm going to keep this in my arsenal. I won't fly it a lot, but it is absolute joy to fly when I do fly it. So look for my Cinewhoop uh, prototype stuff that's coming pretty soon. I hope to, well now that I've liked the DJI system for this specific pur purpose, I'm going to try and squeeze that system into my, my design if I can. And uh, yeah, take care. Floss your teeth. Hope this was fun. Bye.